studios, you know, and uh, they had a great thing for making people laugh. If they didn't laugh, as a spike comes up out the bottom of the <laughs> Sticks in your memory for years. Right? <laughs> then you saw that they stopped using it on the Julian Clary show because nobody laughed and they couldn't get them to hook <laughs> over. I don't understand what that means. It's time to pass it on. Um, yes, I, I think we've done it all now, but it's time now to, because we're running behind time, and I want you to have a good, please promise me, no matter what, you will enjoy yourself. I don't ask you to laugh, but if there's anything you don't understand, laugh now and work it out on the way. <laughs> please enjoy yourself, because that's what we're all here for. So sit back, enjoy yourself, and I'll see you later. Bye. Bye. The Magic in His Marriage by constantly doing the disappearing trick. <laughs> Power. to be careful when you're married to someone like Pearl. <laughs> Although she's up there in Yorkshire, she'll have lookouts everywhere, checking up that I haven't accidentally bumped into a, a certain friend who has similar <laughs> educational interests. <laughs> I think there was one yesterday. This woman with a clipboard came up to me and asked me if I'd been watching television last night. Well, I thought I'd better say yes, rather than admit that my friend and I got lost on a map reading exercise in Bushy Park. <laughs> and she was obviously testing me, for she asked me several things about what programme I'd actually watched. Well, I said I couldn't remember the programme, but it, it well, wasn't very interesting. You know, lots of people wandering about, grumbling, speaking in a foreign language and getting drunk. <laughs> EastEnders, she said. <laughs> she made a note. <coughs> she was obviously checking up on me. But she asked me what I'd watched after that. And, well, luckily for me, I said, well, it's always the same old programmes every night of the week. So that was all right. <laughs> But I nearly came unstuck when she asked me to rate on a scale of one to ten how much I had enjoyed the big event. <laughs> <laughs> well, for a moment I thought of Bushy Park and gave it a ten. <laughs> anyway, if she reports back to Pearls, you'll just have to tell her that I spent a boring evening watching the same old things on television. <laughs> <laughs> our loyal followers. They're mature, discriminating viewers. They know the satisfaction you get from half an hour's good fun. <laughs> Just half an hour, huh? Well, that's all this time, for. <coughs> they know you get much more enjoyment from something that's been around for 28 years. Well, I'll accept the 28 years, huh? I don't know about the been around. <laughs> I don't know, though. What I'm trying to say is that these good people enjoy a bit of class, just like me. Why are you looking at me like that, Howard? <laughs> I'm looking at you the only way I know, with love in my heart. Oh, Howard. <laughs> You meant what I see written in your eyes. Oh, Marie. I do mean it. I've heard it all before, Howard. You shouldn't take advantage of a poor, innocent... <laughs> oh, dear, you rather. <laughs> what do you want to make those eyes at me for? If they don't mean what they say, they make me so They make me glad. They make me want the kind of things that I never had You're fooling around with me now You lead me on and then you run away Well, that's all right I'll get you close And baby, you'll find your 
messing with dynamite, so what do you want to make a lie? If they don't make what they say, if they don't make what they say. for you to see the first of our films this afternoon. Hello, hello, hello. What are you doing here? Good question, Howard. But as a, as a former police officer, I prefer to ask the questions. You just supply the untruthful answers. <laughs> <laughs> well, go ahead, ask me some questions. All in good time, are we? First, let me caution you that anything you say will be taken down and may be misquoted in evidence. <laughs> well, just a minute. I have done absolutely nothing wrong. Nothing, are we? Nothing. What about Marina? Not even with Marina. <laughs> well, uh, well, I suppose then in that case I shall have to... Uh, I shall have to ask Pearl if she can identify... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm saying the wrong thing. I've got it all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what am I supposed to say? <laughs> Do you know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> I said the right thing, but I didn't do the wrong business. The right business. <laughs> I'm so old for this game. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so... Right. I say what I should have said. Yes. Yes. Right. I should have said. Are you sure, Howard? Mm. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? <laughs> What's that? Yeah, what do you think it is? A box of chocolates? <laughs> it's a videotape, Howard. A videotape. Oh, yes. A very interesting videotape. <laughs> It can't be anything to do with me. I haven't done anything wrong. No, I see. Oh, well, I, I suppose I shall just have to check up with Pearl and see if she can identify the two people that are starving in it. <laughs> <laughs> where, where did you get this video, Jack? Well, it's a funny thing, I would uh, I got it from security here at, uh, at uh, Teddington Studios, yeah. Um, it was... Uh, I'm gone again. <laughs> <laughs> the geriatric show, didn't you? <laughs> I got it from security here at Teddington Studios. <coughs> Knowing it must be something to do with Last of the Summer Wine, a nice little clean show, if ever there was one, <laughs> they didn't want to get the police involved. <laughs> police! <laughs> uh, oh, hey, young man, will you, will you come here? <laughs> 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 I may be seen now, but that's a funny shape for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, will you give that to them up there and tell them to show it on the screen, please? Now, just a minute. Look, although I've done absolutely nothing to be ashamed of, do you think it's a good idea to show it now in front of all these people on that big screen there? Oh, don't worry, I would they'll enjoy it. There's only about 300 of them or so here. But there'll be far more when it goes out on Crime Watch. <laughs> crime Watch? Well, they're not going to show it on Blue Peter, are they? I haven't been near a video camera. Ah, that's what you think, Howard. But you must realise that a big studio like this 
is going to have security cameras hidden all over the place, aren't they? <laughs> it's all coming back to you, is it? <laughs> well, all right. Let's have a look, shall we? <laughs> wrong in that. Nobody said there was, Owen. But it's the first time that the security man's been caught on a video with a celebrity and he just wants your autograph. <laughs> well, I signed this lead. Well, now, it's time for you to see the first of our films this oh, afternoon. No. <laughs> Always have to be me. <laughs> Excuse me, what's going on? Oh, it won't be a minute. Oh, it won't be a minute. Yeah. Will you all stand up, please? <laughs> Would you all stand <laughs> up, please? <laughs> oh. <laughs> what, what are you doing? <laughs> okay. I've got to stick a surprise lucky ticket under one of the seats. <laughs> <laughs> what surprise lucky ticket? Oh, it's better the producer's idea. I put a surprise lucky ticket under one of the seats, and whoever finds it wins a bottle of wine. <laughs> well, you've left it a bit late, haven't you? You should have done it before the audience came in. Oh, uh, yeah, I know, but the sticky tape kept sticking. <laughs> well, it's too late now. You, you can't put a surprise ticket under a seat with, without the person sitting on it knowing it's there. It don't matter. The person knows it's going to be there. You, you don't mean the surprise lucky tickets are fixed. Yeah. <laughs> the, the producers arranged for a friend to win the bottle of wine. A very good friend. <laughs> How do you know that? Well, because he put a message on the ticket. See you in my dressing room after the show. <laughs> Love. <laughs> well, I suppose it's none of our business, is it? Yeah. Here, here. Do you think it's her over there with a really big... <laughs> big nose? <laughs> yeah. No, no, it won't be her. No, no, I didn't mean that. I meant something that she got two of. Huh? <laughs> She knows how to flaunt them. <laughs> you mean feet? <laughs> uh, no, it's not the kind, not the kind team manager I heard her stamping down the corridor just now. <coughs> well, uh, uh, let me see this ticket. What? Yeah. <laughs> Who has the message? What? See you in the dressing room after the show. Love couple. Oh no, I'm sorry. Now I forgot. It's on the ticket I lost. <laughs> Where did you lose it? Under one of the seats. I was I was planted under one of the seats and I got the seat plan up the wrong way and the sticky tape went ballistic. <laughs> sure, the first surprise lucky ticket is already under one of the seats. Oh, well, somewhere, yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's on the ticket time. If you'd all stand up and look under your seats, the person who's got the lucky ticket will win a bottle of wine. Oh, I've got to take up the producer's tea for him. He makes me do everything he does. <laughs> he treats me like I was a butler. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I said that name! <laughs> butler! <laughs> I hate you, butler! <laughs> It really is time for you to see the first film this afternoon. And this one is called Hermione, The Short Course. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Hermione, The Short Course. How did you enjoy that? Yes! Oh, good. 
Now, a very popular part of these previews is a film that we made that... Uh, <laughs> well, what's this? <coughs> Tell him. Huh? This is an ancient Eastern magic box. It looks more like an old wardrobe. <laughs> okay. It's an ancient Eastern old wardrobe. <laughs> but you've got to start somewhere. Besides, not what it looks like, it's what it can do. Well, what can it do? Well, for a start, it can make things disappear. Disappear. <laughs> Anything you put in this vanishes, just like that. I was in a pension fund like that. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Where does he go? Who knows, Howard? Maybe into some distant black hole where there is no answer. <laughs> yes. 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 I don't know what you mean. There's no answer. <laughs> well, you're disappear. not telling me that this thing can just make things disappear. Certainly I am. Well, like what? Uh, like him. <laughs> like me. <laughs> Hang about, what do you mean? <laughs> Smiler, it's only an illusion. You won't get hurt. Mm. Well, what do I have to do? All you have to do is get in the box and just stand there and do nothing. You're good at just standing there doing nothing. <laughs> 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 Right, stand back! What are you doing now with me? Oh, Howard, it started to rain outside. <laughs> sheltered in this box. <laughs> Next thing I know, I'm covered in man. <laughs> oh, it was so cramped in there, Howard. It was like rush hour on the central line. <laughs> well, you all get men falling all over you on the central line. Well, that's the central line off my muscle. <laughs> oh, Howard, it's so exciting down here in London. There's so many things to do. Away from Pearl. Oh, I've got a surprise for you, Marie. A surprise? I'm going to take you somewhere very special. Oh, how? Dinner at a posh restaurant? No, 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 not posh, posh. I am going to take you on the London Eye. What, that big wheel that goes round and round? High in the air. We'd be going round in glass boxes where everybody can see us. <laughs> yes, but you can look down and see how small everything is. <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> Marina, we should be sailing through the air together. Oh, how would I think of you as a ship sailing through the ocean looking for an inviting <coughs> Marina. <laughs> yes. And I ended up in Pearl Harbor. <laughs> oh, Howard, I'm waiting for your S.O.S. -S. S.O.S. <laughs> oh, Marina. I think you're G for gorgeous. Oh, I think you are E for electric. <laughs> oh, G, Marina. Oh, G, Howard. A, you're adorable. B, you're so beautiful. C, you're a cutie full of charm. D, you're a darling. And E, you're excited. And F, you're a feather in my arms. C, you're good to me. H, you're so heavenly. I, you're the one I idolize. J, well, I jack it too. K, you're so kissable. L, is the love light in your eyes. M, N, O, B, we could throw on.
all over the world. So successful were these films that Bamford's even had offices in New York. Sadly, the First World War put an end to Home Firth being the Hollywood of the North. But 60 years later, filming returned when the BBC chose Home Firth as the location for Last of the Summer Wine. <coughs> I live in Home Firth and I'd like to join me here to look behind the scenes of Last of the Summer Wine. There are few places where Last of the Summer Wine isn't shown, and fans come from all over the world to see the locations. And, when they're lucky, some filming taking place. Whereas Nora Batty's house has become almost a national shrine, some of the other well-known locations are not as easy to find and are strictly out of bounds. The exterior of Clegg's house is almost exactly as it is in real life. Howard's house is much the same too. Let's see if anybody's at home. Ah, Sylvia, I've been expecting you. Come in. Come in. <coughs> it's very nice in here. Yes, it is very nice. But it's not built to the usual high standard of Yorkshire houses. Why is that? Well, that's because we're now 200 miles from Yorkshire. Here at Shepparton Studios. <laughs> In 1932, when films began to tour, these studios were built and named Sound City. Over the years, they have been home to such successes as Lawrence of Arabia, Bridget Jones' Diary and Harry Potter, and now, Last of the Summer Wine. Here, the sets for all the interior scenes are constructed and carefully lit by the director of photography. As many as 10 different sets are standing at any one time, and each has to be dressed to make it look as authentic as possible. Oh, and cut. Hello. I'm so pleased you've all come this evening to see our little show. I've been in the show since the beginning. That's about 33 years now, on and off. So I'm delighted that so many of you have come. Now we do need you to laugh out loud. I mean we can't hear a smile when you're just smiling at one another. So do remember, do laugh out loud. If not, I'll be out there to see you all. So just behave yourselves and do as you're told. Okay, bye. <laughs> My Barry can't remember how long we've been married. Cut. <laughs> this is Barry and Glenda's house, which is really very posh. I've been in the series for 20 years now, but really it feels just like 10 minutes. Well, I've been in the series for 21 years. And it doesn't seem like it. It seems like 50 years, but never mind. <laughs> this is the new library set built in great expense. <laughs> I, uh, I play Elvin. I, I came in here for a Christmas special about three years ago. <laughs> and uh, I'm still here. <laughs> I think they forgot to fire me. <laughs> and we were very lucky when a real library up in Yorkshire closed down and we were able to buy its entire stock. They help enormously in cases of depression. I'm not depressed. <laughs> no, he always looks like that. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait, I can't 
Hello, I'm Josephine Tewson and I play Miss Davenport the Librarian in Last of the Summer Wine and I've been in it for two years now. First came with an episode with Bernard Cribbins playing his girlfriend who was drunk most of the time. <laughs> well, I've lost him I'm afraid but I'm desperate to get somebody to love in this series and I am doing my best. If you came across any difficulties we could study them together. I always think two minds are better than one alone. Don't you? I must go. Reconditioned washing machine world waits for no man. <laughs> <laughs> Any problem with your truck, Mr. Entwistle? Do call on me again. <laughs> truck, fine. <laughs> well, I hope you'll think of me if you start losing oil pressure. <laughs> oh, thank you, Leslie. Thank you. Uh, hello. Hello. Uh, can you see me through all this? Yes. Uh, well, as you probably remember, once upon a time we used to do this sort of thing in the studio at the television center when 300 hearty people would come along and see about two and a half minutes of film. So we've decided now to do the whole thing on film and that's been happening for years now. And that's why you're here in Teddington watching us. We hope it's not raining today and we hope that you've had a comfortable journey here and we hope that you enjoy what you see and if you don't keep it to yourself <laughs> when i take my hat off you will notice that i'm wearing a toupee <laughs> there are toupees and toupees <laughs> david would you mind <laughs> i am in fact still wearing a toupee the smallest toupee in the world, I think. <laughs> a few years ago, I bashed my head on a car door frame and got these two blood blisters under my skull. So, the doctor had to get out his Black & Decker <laughs> and drill holes in the top of my head to get the blood out, you see. So I was left with these two dents. <laughs> now, our revered director, Alan J.W. Bell, didn't want me coming on his screen looking like a dehorned goat. <laughs> so David here came up with the solution. Voila. <laughs> a newcomer in the series is Bill Owen's son Tom, who plays Compo's son Tom. Hello, Tom. Hi, Sylvia. <laughs> Tom, in the new series, you play Tom Simonite as a short character. Well, Sylvia, I watched Compo in some of the early episodes and I thought, there's a short bloke, he's got to have a short son. So I made the instant decision to play Tom Simonite as a short bloke. Isn't that difficult? For a good actor, no. And for you? <laughs> Besides, I saved the BBC a load of money for shorter costumes. I can see that. Well, thanks a lot, Tom, and good luck with the filming. <laughs> there is another actor in the series who really is tall and is everyone's favourite. People keep asking me why I'm so popular. Well, of course, it's because I'm, I'm so witty and handsome and charming and so modest about it. Otherwise, I would say it exceedingly. I hope you've been running this cafe for nearly 30 years. I dare say I've changed a bit over that time. Now, sometimes we film in the real cafe in Home Firth. But mostly, we film here in the studio, where there's a lot more room. And we can take out the fourth wall, and that makes it a lot cooler. Oh, it gets terribly hot in here when all the lights are on. Now, I'd like to introduce you to another new member of our cast, someone who you'll see more of in the new series. The very first time I worked with Dame Thora Heard was in the award-winning drama Lost for Words, directed by Alan J. W. Bell who also directs Last of the Summer Wine. And I was absolutely delighted when Alan phoned me up and invited me to play Billy Hardcastle, direct descendant of Robin Hood, in an episode. <laughs> After I finished playing Hilda Ogden in Coronation Street for 23 years, I was asked to play Auntie Wainwright in a Christmas special of Last of the Summer Wine. And like many other members of the cast, I was invited back. And here I am still after 12 years. 
I must say, I get a little kick out of hearing people say, I'm not coming in your shop, you'll sell me some. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it doesn't all end with the filming. The film is transferred to video and brought here to Teddington Studios. In the editing room, Andrew Wilde carefully edits all the shots together to make the finished film. If Andrew Wilde looks familiar, that's because his father is Brian Wilde, who played Foggy. Quiet that man. <laughs> Stand by, fellas. Music is an important element of the series, and Ronnie Hazelhurst composes new music for every episode. One, two, three. <laughs> by the sound recorders. Now comes the really important part, and that also takes place at Teddington. Don't tell me, I'm supposed to be telling you. <laughs> All right then, what was it? Oh, sorry, I forgot what it was. <laughs> truly slides down Alvin's leg and he with his fancy shorts. But in take one... He's acting guilty. He's up to something. Not your Barry. He's too dozy. <laughs> when the seal's in action. I want to build a team of experts. We'll have exhibitions. Come inside, 
Barry and sit down. What's wrong? Nothing's wrong. I just want a word with you. I knew it. Something's wrong. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Miss Gavin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Take two. I wonder if I was a warrior. You're still a warrior. <laughs> a warrior. I'd sooner have you as a warrior. <laughs> 63, take six.
Decod, an old hag.